Welcome back to Stratford Red Devils Talk with me, your host, Agostino. Woo! Who? May United beat Tottenham 2 1 at home. Manchester United beat Tottenham 2 1 at home. At Jose Marino's return to Old Trafford, we pulled out the unthinkable. A match, a game that no one gave us any hope of winning myself included if you watched the previous video listen to the previous podcast you know that i wasn't too confident of us winning i thought it'd be a score draw or that tottenham would sneak it by the odd goal when in actuality we ended up sneaking it and we didn't actually sneak that game we beat tottenham fair and square Ole Gunnar Solskjaer deserves all the praise, all the adulation of his coaching staff. They got the formation right. They got the selection right. And we attacked Tottenham from the onset. Of course, for most Man United fans watching that game, you're not surprised really. I think we've known that mostly this team has a tendency of always pulling out big uh, performances against the bigger teams. I think because they get battered week in, week out, playing against the horrible sides. And, you know, for the most part, I think, I think um, a lot of us have kind of understood that the genius of Sir Alex Ferguson was obviously the way he managed the big games, but also was the efficiency and the kind of professionalism that he treated the quote-unquote smaller games. He always made sure his players were up for it. We always went to stadiums like Aston Villa. Um, I can think of like Fulham away when they used to be in the Premier League. And we always turned in a performance against a side that was dogged and determined to not let us win. That's what really makes champions. The ability to beat the sides outside the top six. Because the top six side is always a bit of a flip of a coin. I think that's why Liverpool have been on such a good run. They've squeaked past all these teams outside the top six. So that when you then face your top six opponents... By the time you get to that actual match, your teams are already the teams you're facing are already quote unquote demoralized because they know if they f- if they mess up this one occasion, you're already stretching clear. But back to Man United, an amazing performance from all involved. Again, um, big credit to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I was a bit worried going into the game because we wasn't sure if Scott Montgomery was going to actually start, but he was named in the in the squad. So I looked quite interesting. Um, I, I'm not sure how much to read into the fact that Scott McTominay got an ankle injury ankle injury sorry injury <laughs> and rushed back in record time to in order to kind of play for us and then Pope has had an ankle injury too I'm not sure its severity is a little bit worse than Scott McTominay but he's taken his leisurely time and getting back in full fitness now that might be because he doesn't trust the main night doctors but you know it's a bit weird to see that stuff happening but happy to see Scott McTominay start and what a difference he makes what a difference any competent midfielder any expert in their kind of field makes in that team and again, I think this goes to illustrate um, two things for me. Number one, it goes to illustrate that, number one, those players get away with murder. I think they've been able to get rid of managers quicker than they've been able to get rid of some of the players who deserve a lot more stick and a lot more criticism for their performances they've been putting in. You can't play that you did against Aston Villa like you did against Sheffield United and then turn in a performance like that, right? against Tottenham it's not on really it's it's unacceptable and then again for the club it's also unacceptable for them to see and watch us play with someone like a Scott McTominay in midfield a specialist alongside of Fred who he brings out the best of and then for you to kind of deem that it's not a good idea maybe to get a better cover or another midfielder in there to really add or really spark a bit of quality it makes absolutely no sense I don't get it um that's something that's really troubling but again that aside Scott McTominay was a real big difference a real big key in that midfield having somebody that can actually run up and down the pitch quote-unquote box to box like I mentioned previously he was a real good um partner to Fred Fred's uh good traits are really exemplified or really kind of come to surface when someone like Scott McTominay is playing next to him because Fred's real key attribute is the fact that he's a he's basically a disruptor he's probably not as competent on the ball as a Kante but I would argue in terms of breaking up play getting challenges in and moving the ball quote-unquote recycling the ball he's as good as Kante he's as good as him honestly he's really coming his own and I think if Rashford hadn't scored two goals and had Ori on toast the whole game he probably would have got man the match too he, he even des- he deserved a goal I think uh Fred for that performance he played amazingly well but um by and large incredible incredible team selection by Soul Shark. He really knocked it out of the park there by selecting uh, McTominay. Um, also, I wasn't too mad at the inclusion of Ashley Young. I think Ashley Young, we've long despised. I've long been not been a fan of him. I think Ashley Young is a symptom of the negligence and the short sightedness of our recruitment policy. He shouldn't be a United player anyway. He's not good enough at this level. But for the odd game here and there, as most senior pros are, I think if you brought Phil Jagielka into his side and told him to play against the big size, he probably would play pretty well too, right? Same with someone like a Tim Cahill or Evans, right? I don't think it's that big of a deal because they're professional football players, so they obviously have some level of talent. But I think in terms of relying on him week in, week out for a title run, for a run at the trophies and stuff, you can't be playing someone like an Ashley Young. 
But what he does provide is the ability to put someone into a team who's experienced, who keeps himself fit, who's hardly ever injured, and he has, has an insane amount of um, uh, fitness to kind of keep up and down that, that uh, left-hand side of the pitch that he was kind of occupying. Now, on the ball, he might be a bit wasteful. Um, he's not the best cross of the ball, even though he was a, you know, a quote-unquote converted winger. But he's aggressive in a tackle. I love all his shit, cunt, shit baggery that he does in terms of wasting time, diving on the floor, antagonizing players, complaining to refs. All that kind of um, nasty, um, experienced, senior pro stuff that we don't have in a team, he brings it in bucket and spades. Now, of course, that can't neglect for his lack of ability on the ball. But if you, circum if you kind of supplement that with other players alongside him who are better, to, it makes the best out of him so it's no coincidence that if he's playing alongside competent defenders so if he's playing in a back four that contains a Lindelof on form a Harry Maguire on form and a, a and um Aaron Wan-Bissaka on form Young doesn't look as bad but when he's playing alongside uh a, a not confident Jones a not confident Smalling and a makeshift right back it gets a bit you know out of the blue um, again, credit to Solskjaer again for not picking Pereira. I think that was good to get him out of the firing line. And also, I think for this kind of game, the frantic nature of it, the fact that we needed to press Tottenham, get get them on the front foot, the fact that we were trying to capitalise on our possession when we had it, we couldn't be wasteful in it. We had to make sure we punished them. Marcus Rashford had probably one of the best performances I've seen of his in the Man United shirt in ages. Um, he was like a man possessed. He was absolutely ripping down that left-hand side of the pitch. And again, it goes to show just how... Um, Waste negligent, wasteful it was to play him centre forward for so long. I think we we saw the the worst of uh, Marcus Rashford playing in that position. He probably got injured a lot more because of that playing in that position. Um, I think the fact that he's able to come in off the wing or be on the last sh or be on the, sh the shoulder of the defender is his perfect place. Especially when he needs to, when he gets a bit to cut in on his right foot and smash it in. It'll be good to have um, James playing there sometimes or having him swap over because I think James is the best position too. Is also from the left hand side, but Rashford was incredible today incredible 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 what an amazing performance man everything that he did was gold he absolutely ripped Aurier to pieces I think I mentioned it in the match preview before I wasn't confident of Aurier um, going uh, going backwards but I thought he would be a threat for us going forward but again um, Rashford kind of nullified that threat by continually getting at him so much so that he made him and then kind of essentially won the penalty through Mr. Sissoko which the penalty was a bit soft I think I think Mr. Sissoko didn't actually touch didn't get much of Rashford but I think um, the fact that he came on the wrong side and essentially, he didn't really get the ball clean enough, was enough probably to make the referee blow for the whistle. And then Rashford, of course, disposed, dispatched the penalty really simply. Um, Deli Ali scored a world-class goal, which I don't really blame anyone for. I think the fact the ball was bouncing in the box, defenders are always quite wary of kind of jumping up and attacking it in case you clatter the striker and then end up getting a penalty. I think if you're a player, you'd, you'd much rather gamble the ball dropping and you'd be able to react to it first, as opposed to like jumping and clattering the defender and giving it a penalty. It's not worth it because I think, you know, you could potentially even get a red card. It's not the worth it decision to do. So that wasn't, that's there and gone. But again, I'm surprised, man, that Tottenham didn't turn up. Um, I, I think Tottenham didn't turn up and we obviously pressed them on the front foot. I was surprised not to see Mourinho kind of adopt that long ball game that he's done pre in previous games. It's worked out really well with Delielli running through the middle, coming in from the, the flank and come, yeah, coming in from the flank into the box, like sort of doing like an L-shaped movement. I'm surprised if they didn't do that, but maybe we nullified that by the fact that how deep we were sitting or the way we were pressurizing the person on the ball to not get those balls clipped over the top. But again, expert stuff from everyone involved. Uh, I really enjoyed the performance. I thought everyone played really well. Again, I would say um, at a stretch, I'd probably say um, Fred was probably my man in the match. Um, maybe then second only to maybe uh, Mason Greenwood. I thought he played amazing too. I thought he did the, the simple things really well. He kind of moved the ball around. He made sure he gave the ball when it needed, hold it when it needed, and just looks a real quality player. Again, I'm, I'm interested to see what's going to happen in the next game against City, whether or not we're going to adopt a, a formation where we actually play Greenwood a bit further forward and maybe have Rashford kind of supplying the balls and coming in from behind. I'm not sure how we're going to work that one out. Um, but again, I think this Man United team is, is kind of suited to playing against a better side who will let us have the ball. I think once we play against the sides outside the top six who kind of have a bit of a lower block, then we kind of run out of ideas because we don't really have anyone in the midfield who can really unlock a defence in the quintessential number 10 role. Which again goes to show 
that we have to buy a midfielder, uh, a creative one in the in a January transfer window. I think a midfielder is even more important than a striker at this moment. I'd much rather I'd 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 be okay waiting to get a striker in the summer and making do with Mason Greenwood, Rashford, and Martial. I don't know if one of them gets injured, but basically um, finished. But maybe get someone in for loan to kind of make up the numbers. But we really need somebody to come in a number eight, a number ten. And really kind of sit in that hole, especially if uh, Pogba ends up leaving. We're going to be light on the on there. But in this game, I think Lingard played really well, actually, in that position. He really showed what he can bring to a team. He was really energetic, got on the ball a lot, moved the ball around. And again, I think Lingard is another of those players, similar to maybe a Fred, who does really benefit from playing against, playing alongside uh, more competent footballers who are able to kind of do the things that he can't do so he can shine. I think if you put Lingard in the Man City side, you put Lingard in Liverpool, you put Lingard in the Chelsea side even, you'll see a whole different side of Lingard. But playing in this dysfunctional Man United side where he's essentially having to pick up the ball, carry it, distribute it, um, kind of, you know, run onto his own second balls or run onto his own through balls doesn't work out properly. But when you have people around him buzzing and, you know, popping balls around the corner, quick one-twos, that's when you get the best out of Lingard. So hopefully we see more of that in the next game. And um, again, I'm not sure what the formation is going to be against City. I'm not sure if we're going to adopt the same formation or same team, but I like the experience we had on the field. I like the combinations. I like the combination of McTominay and um, Fred. I like the 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 fullbacks in terms of wing and young. I mean, I, I remember Saka and Ashley Young, both very aggressive in a tackle, quick going forward. There's a mistake in Young, of course, but you know that is what it is. And of course, Maguire and Lindelof, when they're on their game, they have the ability to kind of you know get those balls cross field and really kind of you know get us further up the pitch. Um, and again, Rashford was exhilarating. I can't wait to see if he does the same thing against City as well going forward. But yeah, good game from all involved. Um, it takes the pressure off Ole Gunnar Solskjaer somewhat. But again, you know, in football, you're only one game away from the sack or one game away from winning the league. So let's just wait, wait it out, be a bit chill and kind of um, reconvene on the weekend. But yeah, congratulations. Congratulations. What am I saying congratulations to Anyway, I'm happy. I'm over the moon. We won. And I'll see you guys again on Saturday for another recap of the match coming up against City so tune in tune out if you're listening via the podcast app of course leave me a five star review so people can find the show and if you're watching via YouTube smash that like button click subscribe and I'll see you guys again very very soon peace take care bye